Hi, John Gagan here, and uh, welcome back to the fifth installment of my short story, The Eighth Dwarf. As you may recall, uh, in our last installment, Snow White had uh, been made pregnant by Walt Disney, and uh, her dear friend Sleazy had arranged for her to have an abortion after the premiere of the Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. But when Sleazy showed up to meet Snow White, um, Disney was there and pushed her into a car and drove her off into the night. And poor Sleazy wandered several years after that, a lost soul, uh, developed a drinking problem and was last seen under a bridge in Bakersfield, California. So with no more further ado, here's the fifth installment of my short story, The Eighth Dwarf. In December 1938, two years after Snow White premiered, Lenny Riefenstahl showed up in Hollywood looking for a job. She wanted Walt to give her a personal tour of his studio as a prelude to introducing her around town. Walt was right to be worried. This was not a smart idea in a town run by Jews. It was only a month after Kristall knocked. If word got out, he'd be shunned. The Jeeves in this town will kill me if they hear about Lenny, he told me over lunch at the commissary. Hell, even the good people of Kansas would stone her. But Walt owed Lenny a favor for helping him find Snow White, so he gave her the tour, just made sure there were no photographers or press releases. To be fair, I don't think Walt was an ardent Nazi sympathizer, but it didn't help his reputation when Goebbels gave Hitler 18 Mickey Mouse shorts as a Christmas present. The Minister of Propaganda even wrote in his diary, the Führer was very pleased. Christ, even Hitler was a Mickey Mouse fan. The point is that during the tour, Lenny started asking Walt about Snow White. I always wondered what happened to that girl, Lenny said half to herself. After all that success, she never made another picture. Strange, no? That's when Walt told Lenny he'd had Snow White deported to Germany as an undesirable alien. But why, Walt? Why would you do that? She was nothing but trouble, Lenny. She had a monkey on her back from the day she arrived, which made her uncontrollable. Not only that, she got herself knocked up before the picture was finished. You Weimar ladies may like the white stuff, but it caused nothing but trouble for her. How did you convince the Assorties to do such a thing? Wasn't hard, Walt boasted. Once I told them she'd made a half dozen pictures with Hitler's favorite director, mainly you, she was a goner. Lenny was shocked, of course, which is really saying something since the woman was basically unshockable. It was bad enough that Walt had traded on Lenny's notoriety to get Snow White deported, but when he winked as if to say she was in on the joke, Hitler's favorite director got angry. Lenny had hoped Walt would jumpstart her American career, but his hospitality began and ended with that studio tour. When an opportune phone call cut the tour short, Walt breathed a sigh of relief and waved goodbye to Lenny. She never forgot the insult. Lenny had heard the rumors about Sleazy and Snow White, so before she returned to Germany, she hired a P.I. to track Sleazy down. Where the P.I. found him, she sent Sleazy a letter. Snow White is in Germany, Lenny wrote, but you better hurry, darling. Austria was the last peaceful Anschluss. From now on, the Fuhrer takes what he wants. The next morning, Sleazy left her Europe. The United States may not have been at war yet, but getting to Europe was no easy matter. How Sleazy managed it, I'll never know, but somehow he got himself to Berlin. Whoever said love finds a way wasn't kidding. The Germans were amazingly upbeat for a people at war. Every minute there was some sort of parade that brought citizens, soldiers, and marching bands into the street. Crowds lined the sidewalks, proudly waving swastika flags. 
before inevitably ending up in a beer garden, noshing sauerbraten and singing patriotic songs. Normally, Sleazy would have joined the festivities. He even found a fräulein or two that seemed to take a passing interest in him. But Sleazy was on a mission. He didn't have much to go on, just a few stories Snow White had told him about her childhood. He thought he might find her family on his own, but after a week in Berlin, he desperately needed help. As it turned out, Germans love a dwarf. Sleazy, Sleazy didn't know whether it was because of their proclivity in German folklore or because the German people weren't too tall themselves. But they shook his hand with enthusiasm, asking him how he liked Berlin, and insisted he join them for a sampling of the local Pilsner. Still, they were helpful only up to a point. When they heard he was looking for his fiance, they fell all over themselves to offer advice. But when they learned she was a Jew, an ominous quiet would descend upon the table. Sleazy looked all over for Snow White with no luck. It wasn't until someone pulled him aside during the Fuhrer's birthday celebration that Sleazy got his first real lead. The man, who refused to identify himself or explain why he was helping, told Sleazy that many German Jews had already fled. If Snow White was alive, she was probably in Amsterdam. The Netherlands isn't a big country, but it's still hard to find someone if you don't know where to start. Sleazy began in Amsterdam, followed by a few coastal cities, but the Nazis had the country locked up tighter than a Dutch widow's purse, and they were much less helpful than in Berlin. What Sleazy didn't know was that Snow White was hiding in Amsterdam. Walt may have had her deported to Germany, but she jumped ship at Cherbourg to make her way to the land of tulips, wooden shoes, and windmills. She hadn't planned on staying long, she thought life might be safer in one of the Nordic countries. But once the Nazis invaded in 1940, she was forced to go underground. She'd lost the baby in the process. The stress of travel combined with the tension of crossing all those war-torn borders resulted in a miscarriage. Snow White mourned the baby's loss. Though she'd never cared for Walt, a secret part of her wished the baby had been sleazy's and survived. Snow White lived in the cramped attic of a family she'd met by accident. It was a lonely life with few distractions, but she was grateful for the refuge. Her only complaint was the attic's moody teenager who kept to herself and spent all her time writing in her diary. But when Snowy heard the local theater was showing a print of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, she couldn't help herself. Jews were forbidden to go to the movies in Amsterdam, and since Snow White was in hiding, she had no choice but to give up her favorite pastime. In this case, however, she decided to risk it. That night, she snuck out, bought a ticket, and sat in the theater dreaming about happier times. It was not a wise choice. During intermission, a Christian child recognized her and denounced her to the police. Snow White was arrested where she sat. Three days, three days later, she was shipped to Treblinka. When Sleazy returned to the United States, empty-handed, he was unsure of Snow White's fate. He was sure of one thing, though. He wanted revenge on the one man he held responsible. To be continued on part six, thanks for listening.